So I wanted to do a quick tutorial video on how to configure VMware Workstation, primarily the VMware VMNet network adapters that get installed with it on your host machine. Um, what we will be doing is configuring VMs to use these uh, VMNet adapters so that way we can connect uh, the two VMs as well as other network devices inside the GNS3 network simulator. So to get started we'll open up the, our VMware Workstation and then you should have your VMs listed on the side here. Um, it's preferred that you do this while the VM is powered off. However, I already have mine configured and I'm just going to go over the configurations I have. So what I've done here is you'll right click on the VM, select settings. And then once that opens up, um, you'll, you might only see one network adapter. You can either select that network adapter click custom and change to VMNet1 or you can click add at the bottom here and then add in a new network adapter with the same idea you want to select custom and then VMNet1 and as you can see I have my NAT network adapter here disconnected and I have my custom VMNet1 network adapter connected and powered on um, so what I've done for my other VM, and I'm not too sure if you're actually able to use the same network adapter for both VMs. It doesn't seem like it would make sense, but it is virtual, so it is, I guess, possible. Um, I've set up this network adapter to use VMNet 8, and you can set it up the same way. So uh, from here what we'll do is we'll open GNS3 we will drop in a router and we'll drop in two hosts we'll configure this host for our windows machine so what we'll do is we will right click configure and we will delete all of the network adapters except for the vmnet1 adapter click apply And we will do the same thing for our Linux machine, except in this instance we will select or delete everything except for the VMNet 8 network adapter. And now we can connect up the network. And what we'll want to do here is configure the VM so that way each port on the side that's facing that VM is set up as the default gateway for that VM. So in this instance, we will open up our Windows VM and we'll just quickly make sure that the firewall has been turned off, which it is. If it's not, you can turn it off by selecting turn Windows Firewall on or off, and then selecting the Turn Off options. Once that's done, we can open the Network and Sharing Center, change the adapter settings, select the adapter we're going to use, and click Properties. From here, we will select IPv4 and Properties. When you first come in, you may see something like this. So what we're going to do is select, or set the IP address to what we want to use on this side of the router. So it'll be .192.168.10.3 as a client IP address. The subnet mask will be a slash 24. And we will set this gateway IP address as the default gateway, or sorry, the uh, uh, FA00 IP that we're going to use. So I will set it as 10.1, click OK, and close. So now what we'll do is start up the router open up a console and while this boots up we will do the Linux adapter so we'll switch over to our Linux VM and Linux flavors can vary based on what they look like and where you go and sometimes even how you configure things so I have a Fedora VM here and uh, what we'll do is open activities and we're gonna open a terminal 
If you can't see the terminal on the screen you're looking at, or it's not on the side here, you can always search terminal. Or console, I believe, will work too. Um, so we'll open up the terminal, and we'll quickly look at the current adapter configuration. As we can see, it's already configured for an a, uh, IP address that I'd like to use for this side of the router but uh, I will go over the configuration anyways. So we have two options for doing this. You can either switch to the user root or you can issue sudo before every command. I am going to switch to the root user, so sudo switch user root. And we are now going to enter in the IP address for the adapter that we'd like to use. So since we're gonna be using this adapter, it'll, we'll do ifconfig and then the IP address. And we will need to do the same thing, except this time after the network adapter, we will place netmask and then a slash 24 subnetmask. Now we will also have to add the default gateway. So in order to do that, you do route add default gateway than the default gateway. So in this instance, it will be the FA01 interface on the router. And then you will also need to specify the port again. And since I've already configured this, it says file exists. But if this is the first time you're doing this on your machine, it should just pass. Another thing I'd like to do right now is um, I already have it started up, but we will start up the SSH service so that way we can actually use a remote connection from the Windows VM into the Linux VM. So in order to do that, you can do service sshd, and then as I said, I already have it started, so we'll do restart, and if it's the first time, you would use start, and you can stop it by using stop. So it's pretty simple, um, once it's configured, we will now go to GNS3 and we will go back into the router. So now that we have the router up, we will do the configuration for uh, the FA00 and the FA01 ports. So we will do CONT T to get into configuration mode and then we will enter the FA00 interface. Set the IP address as the default gateway for the Windows machine. So in this instance, 192.168.10.1 with a class or a slash 24 subnet mask. And we will need to do the same thing, but for FA01. So we will do interface FA01, IP address, the gateway that we're using for our Linux machine. And we'll just quickly look at our configuration here. Alright, as you can see the IP addresses have been assigned to the ports we're using and they are up. So at this point we should be able to ping across from the virtual machine. So what we'll do from the Linux machine is ping count four because we only want it to do it four times. If you don't specify this in Linux, it will continue to see ping until you manually stop it. And as you can see, we can ping the Windows VM. So from the Windows VM, we should be able to ping the Linux VM. So we will do ping And we should also be able to, because we've allowed the service, connect to um, the Linux machine using a, a remote connection. So in this instance, I'm using PuTTY. You can use the remote desktop connection if you want, but I like PuTTY, so that's what I'm going to use. And open. And we will need to specify the login credentials that we want to use for the Linux machine. And as you can see, I'm now logged in to the window or the Linux virtual machine from the Windows virtual machine. I hope this video was helpful for you, and thank you for watching.